Hey guys, I've got another distribution first impressions video for you today. Today we are going to be taking a look at Lubuntu 16.10, the second and final beta codenamed Yakety Yak. So uh, this is going to be quite a short um, review of the, the summary of it, but this review is going to be slightly different to the other ones that I've done on this channel lately in the sense that I've actually installed this distribution in a virtual machine using the alternative CD and I'm going to show you how to do that later on in this video uh, because, well, there's not actually that much to say about Lubuntu 16.10. Uh, the biggest piece of news that, that came out of it is that the LXQT images are postponed until 17.04. Again, this doesn't bother me because these things get held up and, you know, you sort of work with it and there's still a uh, a 1610 release as a result of this, so that's all fine. Um, but i got to say that uh, I'm really excited to see what might become of an LXQT-based desktop, a lightweight desktop environment built, you know, into a, uh, into a major Linux distribution, what that might look like, um, a lightweight QT-based desktop environment. So that's going to be very exciting, very interesting. Um, because LXDE did not like the idea of of, um, uh, of going all in for GTK3. Now I don't know if LXDE is the the sort of the known branch of that, and then LXQT is like the QT branch of that, or whether or not they're two entirely separate projects. I'm not super knowledgeable about that kind of thing. I mean, I've had a look before, and it's not super clear because they're just two different pieces of software, and, and I suppose their relationship isn't wholly important at this stage, whether or not it's it's just a difference between something that's GTK-based or QT-based, or whether or not they're entirely different projects with very similar goals. It doesn't really matter. But uh, again, quite looking forward to seeing... Um, I think this is like the first... This is the second time a Linux dist uh, an Ubuntu-based Linux distribution has changed its desktop environment. The first, of course, being um, the uh, flagship Ubuntu when they changed from uh, GNOME 2 across to Unity, which is uh, kind of um, a semi-switch in a way because Unity is really just a layer on top of GNOME 3. So take that for what you want. So let's just have a quick look at the um, the operating system itself. Here is the uh, the uh, the release notes. Um, it basically tells you about the like the upgrade process here. Um, tells you what to expect out of a beta. It tells you about some known issues and there aren't too many known issues. There is one that I've noticed here that isn't listed. So I'm just going to uh, minimize that. So let's have a look at the menus to begin with. So we've got what we've got in the accessories. We've got calculator. Uh, which is a GTK3 app, I think. Not entirely sure. Um, or I mean, like the you know the GNOME calculator is a GTK3 app. I don't know if that version of it or whether or not it was bundled as a GTK2 version. You've got uh, MT Paint. You got simple scanning utilities. That's quite good. Uh, Firefox, Pigeon, Transmission. So you've got the lighter weight, sort of the GNOME office, which is strange that they've never really decided to unite behind a, a more um, unifying branding, you know, bringing Abbey Word and Numeric and, and other stuff into an, an office suite and rather just keeping them as individual applications. I guess in some ways it's nice to be able to mix and match and, and, and chop and change, but um, in the same way that there was K Office that's now Caligra, I think is what it's called, which is really quite nice. Uh, you know, th th there is room for an, a GNOME alternative, a GNOME-specific alternative to something like LibreOffice. There are a lot of problems with LibreOffice. It's quite heavy. It's quite clunky. It uh, doesn't always um, work super well because it is kind of complicated. Sometimes you just don't need all those bells and whistles. You got, you've still got GNOME mPlayer. I'd like to have seen MPV put in there. GVC View, Pulse Audio. It's the same software stack that we've seen uh, time and time again. So again, solid incremental change. Really quite like it. Uh, one difference that I've noticed is that they've got the, the GNOME 3 software center, which again is a bit of a curious decision um, because I thought that the Lubuntu specific app center was actually quite good. It's very basic, very simple. Um, I guess they decided to ditch it for, for either it was too much work or it was going in a direction that they didn't want or maybe they just preferred GNOME. However, I'm going to use this as an opportunity just to pick out one issue. and I think it's the only issue that I've seen come out of this distribution. So I'm going to get um, just a simple... Uh, and look how snappy that is. In a virtual machine, it's just bang, 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 bang. Okay, it's kind of, once you've done it the first time, it's kind of loaded up. Uh, 
PC file manager, which again is one of uh, I do quite like that as a file manager as well. This file manager, um, uh, PC Man FM, that's what it's called. And if you if you're running like a i3 tiling uh, window manager setup, or or you you're in a situation where you have to choose your own um, file manager, PC Man FM is pretty good. Um, it's not super feature full, but it does the basics and does the basics really well. And sometimes that's all you need. If you want to do advanced stuff, the command line is, is the place to go, if you ask me. Anyway, I meant to br wanted to bring that up for a reason. So basically, the GTK themes, you can see it in the corner here. The rounded corners are not transparent. I've seen this happen a few times with uh, GTK themes. It's the minorest of minor errors on a um, on a distribution that isn't even designed to be that pretty. It's designed to be snappy, functional, and lightweight. So again, this is this is really me, really struggling to find a fault. But I really like things just to, when they're out of the box to have a nice, um, coherent, cohesive kind of look, and just that little little bit of lack of polish. Everything else is so polished. If if the rest of the distribution was falling apart, if the rest of the distribution was bad, this wouldn't be an issue for me. However, everything else I, is is like it's just an incremental upgrade from before. I can't complain about it. And I liked the one from before. Like this is a distribution that I really quite like. But one one I don't know, maybe maybe and, and I think I remember seeing this in possibly even um sixteen oh four regular Ubuntu when it didn't have that. I've I remember seeing some other people's review videos of Ubuntu um sixteen oh four, which I don't think I did myself, and they had that similar problem. And what it is, it's not even that complicated a problem. I think it's the GTK theming. I think it's just an issue with theming. It might be an issue with the the GNOME upgrade to um, 3.20 theming. Um, it doesn't look like it because the GNOME 3.20 th uh, theming um, looks like you know like that looks. This looks like it works. Uh, this you know this looks like it's not subject to that kind of bu bug. But anyway, like I say, smallest of smallest cosmetic errors. Everything else works perfectly fine out of the box. I even like the new background wallpaper. So, uh, for the next part of the video, I'm just going to pop across now to, uh, I'm going to restart the virtual machine, and I'm going to boot into the CD, and I'm going to just run through the alternative installation process uh, with you, um, just, to, just, to, just to mix up the variety of these kind of videos. So I'll see you in a second. So here I am at the first screen of the installation process. Uh, I'm just going to select English. Um, so you've got a few options here. If you press F6, you can have a look at some other options. Uh, so like no no mode resets, free software only, all of that kind of stuff. Rescue a broken system, so I assume that boots you into the command line perhaps, you can test the memory. Uh, what accessibility options have you got? High contrast, braille terminal. Um, so that's, you can do expert mode, which I think allows you to install a command line only version of it. Uh, the key map, you can select the correct key map. Uh, you can have the OEM installation. There we go. Uh, the, the F4 for the different modes. So you can install a command line system if you just want to put your own tiling manager and whatnot on top. I, I believe this is the same for all alternative CDs. And this is the OEM install for manufacturers. So what that does is it basically installs the distribution, but it doesn't uh, set up user profiles. It lets you do that on the first boot. So, as you, so you install it onto a laptop and then hand it out to someone. Right, install Lubuntu. And it's so basically the alternative installer is a text uh, interface installer like this. And the idea is perhaps you need a little bit more tinkering to get your graphics card to work. Maybe you're on low end hardware and you just need a really, um, you need an installation process with a very low memory footprint. Maybe you're just installing a text only system because, you know, your, 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 your graphics just aren't up to par or, or you're installing a server or you're just playing around. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to use the alternative CD. I'm not entirely sure why they don't include this as a feature in the main CD. Uh, my uh, off the bat guess would be simply because of the disk size. But of course, uh, I believe that it, uh, Ubuntu have been considering increasing their um, distribution size from uh, from being able to fit onto a 700 megabyte DVD to being able to fit in onto a one gigabyte. USB drive. So they might raise the limit from 700 megabytes to 1000. I could be wrong on that one. I don't know what their final decisions are on that or anything like that. So usually when I do a virtual machine, I just type VM for everything. It just keeps things quite easy. So that way, if I 
and I'll use the weak password. I'm not going to encrypt the home directory, just uh, takes more time. Um, that is the correct time zone, good stuff. Starting up the partitioner. Okay, cool. So it has uh, detected that the following um, disks have mounted partitions. Uh, slash dev slash SDA. I'm not entirely sure why that is because I did shut down properly. Uh, unmount partitions that are in use, but we can uh, simply unmount that. Uh, we can use the entire disk. So it gives you some guided options here. Some pretty good ones actually as well. Um, set up LVM, encrypted LVM, resize, or you can do manual. Now, I'm what I do when I do whenever I'm against a text only installer whether or not it's the Ubuntu installer that's the, you know this one or whether or not it's like the the Arch installer I will usually boot into a live CD of one distribution I've got go into gparted and then partition my disk accordingly and then just go into manual and then select the right partitions and how to mount them rather than actually try and partition the device the, the hard drive itself in the installer you can do it, but it's just more difficult than it needs to be. Like, um, if they could find a way to put in a really good partitioner into a, a text-based installer, um, you wouldn't need a graphical uh, installer. But there are a num you know, there are numerous tasks where mouse interaction and visual, um, you know, sort of uh, manipulation of all the elements is is really better than the text equivalent. Um, the chief uh, example of this is like video editing. You can't edit video from a command line, really. You need, you know, you need you need all the visuals there. You need to be able to chop and change and cut and undo and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, if they could, if there was a way to actually make it so that, um, if there was a way to make it so that uh, you can uh, partition your hard drive uh, effectively and easily in a really user-friendly way from the, from from this sort of uh, selection screen, this kind of like you know um, without X, then uh, then I think you only need that. But uh... right, we'll write those changes to the disk. Uh, the in the last screen, the disk that I selected was the only hard drive that I've set for this virtual machine. So we're going to write these changes to disks. To disk and now it's installing the base system so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly um, stop recording here and um, let the uh, let the installation finish off and um, and I'll catch up with you then okay so I've let the installation process carry on it's taken about 20 minutes uh, so it's asking me if I want to install the grub bootloader to the master boot record. Uh, yes. And it's installing it to the beginning of slash dev slash SDA. But since that's the only hard disk drive in the machine, that's fine. We want to set the system clock to UTC. And installation is complete. So, if we're lucky, it should be rebooting us into our new file system. Okay, so that is my first impressions take on Lubuntu 16.10, the second and final beta. It looks really promising. I really like it. I've always liked Lubuntu, apart from that really horrible, obscure cosmetic error with the uh, GTK3 uh, client-side decorations, i.e. the software center. It's, it's exactly what I wanted. It's exactly what you want. Now, some people have been questioning, is it worth... Um, upgrading from the long-term support on these versions of Ubuntu and I would say that of course it depends on your use case that's pretty much my answer for every question uh, however it really depends on on whether or not the Wi-Fi issue affects you so if you if you're getting Wi-Fi if you've got internet you're fine and then the second question you want to ask yourself is do you need software that's six months newer than what you've currently got uh, if you do you want newer software or if you've got if you're happy with what you got there's no need to upgrade but if you're looking for something a little more cutting edge with the software then you may wish to upgrade um, it's up to you uh, if if I'm installing like usually with my daily driver that will be the one that I I have a rolling release on or the latest version of of, of Ubuntu or Lubuntu or Zubuntu or whatever and then all my secondary machines laptops and whatnot they'll all have long-term support releases so it's less work to upgrade all of them when the time arrives because upgrading your operating system every six months even though it takes a couple of hours tops well maybe more than a couple of hours it depends um 
the thing is, doing it every six months, then it starts to get in the way of things. Then you start having to schedule a day for it or take some time out for it, and then it becomes a little bit more complicated. One of the things that rolling releases, uh, or at least stable rolling releases like Manjaro, uh, have on the scheduled upgrading process. But this is great. This is this is a really good distribution. I like it. I like everything about it. It's lightweight. It's lean. It's customizable. It does. It's not the best looking, but you can theme it to make it look really quite nice as well. So that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Do any of you guys use LXDE? Let me know down in the comment section below because it's one that I don't see about very often, but it's one that I really quite like. It's you know, like I say, it's customizable and it's it is user friendly. Like I mean, you can just look. It's a menu with with you know that's all you need it only gives you what you need to get the job done but for all intents and purposes for most people that's all you need you don't need um you know fancy uh you know desktop effects or or theming features all that kind of stuff sometimes you just want buttons to get things done and and that's what lxde is that's what ubuntu is and i think they've got a pretty pretty good um pretty good niche where they are so that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.